Hey, what's going on, guys? Once again, the Lord has brought us through another weekend. We are here to give God praise for another Monday. Welcome to Eat Up Mondays with your boy Trevor Pope. I pray that all of you guys had a great weekend. I am thankful for all that the Lord has done this past weekend, the past week, you know, my whole entire life. Just truly thankful for everything that God has done. And I pray that you guys feel the same as well. Listen, before we get into our meal on this Monday, I just want to say if you are watching on YouTube, don't forget to like the video if it is encouraging to you. Don't forget to share it if it is encouraging to you. Also, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please click the subscribe button. And after you click the subscribe button, a bell should pop up on the right of you. Click that and it will notify you every time we upload a video. Also, before we get into our meal, I want to ask you guys help on something. I am in the process of getting a new computer uh, for the ministry for for the video work and the audio work that I'm doing here on YouTube and and working on some other things and I'm also trying to get an audio recorder uh, because hopefully soon I'm going to start having people on with me just you know whether it's telling their testimony maybe sharing some things in the word when it comes to things that God has shown them, maybe some things that, you know, maybe a friend of mine have talked about, because I do have a few friends that we really have some great conversations when it comes to the word. And I'm, and I'm always telling them like, man, we should be recording this and allowing other people to hear and just sit in on it and possibly, you know, eventually chime in on it. So I want to get an audio recorder because I know with the Zoom meetings, which I've never done one myself, like actually conducted a Zoom meeting. I know sometimes with the audio, you know, it can be a little sketchy. So that's that's another piece of equipment that I want to get also. And I'm asking you guys if you can, if it is possible, if you would like to donate to me grabbing, you know, the computer and the audio recorder right now, I'm using a Mac mini, which I've had for some years now, and it's it's been slowing down for quite a while. So it's almost time. It's, well, it is time for me to get another one because sometimes doing certain projects, it can move really slow. But by the grace of God, you know, it's, it's getting through the projects no matter how long it takes. But, you know, I'm coming to that into that season where it's time to grab another one. I actually was going to get another Mac Mini because those are like the cheapest Macs you can get, even though they've went up now. I think my last one I bought was like 600 bucks. And I think now you're talking about they're starting like at a thousand. But one of the reasons why I'm not going to get that, I'm going to get an iMac this time is because I've never done any YouTube lives like where I've actually, you know, done a live video and sat and interacted with people. I've never even done a Facebook live. So this time around, instead of having the Mac mini and then have a TV as a, a monitor, I want to get a computer where I have the webcam and, you know, I'm able to go live or whatever have you. So that's going to be you know, a little expensive. I didn't even realize the IMAX cost what they cost, but just wanted to put that out there to you guys that if you wanted to donate, there's always been donation links in the description of the YouTube videos. I never really mentioned it because I don't really like to ask for donations if I don't really need it for something at the time. And one of the reasons why the donation buttons are even there in the first place is because in the past, people would ask me like, listen, how do I donate if I want to be a blessing? How can I do that? And that was one of the reasons why I put it, you know, in the description. And not that I have anything against people donating, obviously, because people want to support what you're doing. And that's truly a blessing. And I'm truly appreciative of those that have supported because once in a blue moon, somebody would donate and plant something. And, and I truly appreciate it because it helps out a lot. So if you go in the description of the YouTube video, you'll see the two links. You can donate through Cash App or you can donate through PayPal. I'm not 100 percent sure of what the PayPal link is off the top of my head, but I know for Cash App is dollar sign Trev Pope, T-R-E-V-P-O-P-E. -E. So it's dollar sign T-R-E-V-P-O-P-E. -E. So anything that you guys can donate will truly be a blessing because it will go to a great cause. And on another note, if you don't have anything to give, that is totally fine. I just ask that you pray that God's will be done. If you don't have anything, I'm telling you, don't worry about it because there's no pressure. You don't have to feel like, oh, you know, 
<laughs> and, and and the reason why I say that is because you see that in church a lot sometimes where people don't have to give, you know, people could kind of make them feel bad about not being in a certain place and being able to give. And, you know, we know that that's not the Lord. So if you're not able to give your prayers are enough and they are just as much of a blessing as somebody donating financially. So thank you guys for that. And with that being said, we're getting ready to dig into this meal. Enough of the table talk. I've held up the meal long enough. The spread is here. Without further ado, guys, let's dig in. Now, today we're going to be coming out of Numbers chapter 14, and we're going to be reading verses 20 through 24. Now, I want to just talk briefly about something from this passage of scripture and some things that happened when it came to the children of Israel back then. But I'm going to really get into it on the podcast this Wednesday because it will give me this Wednesday and Thursday because it will give me the opportunity to talk about it, you know, even more at length. But Numbers 14 and 20 starts off by saying, and the Lord said, I have pardoned according to my word or to thy word. But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord, because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and have tempted me now these 10 times and have not hearkened to my voice, surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers. Fathers, neither shall any of them that provoke me see it. So God is saying about the children of Israel, listen, they've tempted me 10 times. They've tested me. You know, they haven't trusted me through this process. So they're not going to see the land that I promised them. Verse 24 says, but my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him and have followed me fully him will I bring into the land whereunto he went and his seed shall possess it. And like I said, I don't want to dig too deep into this story because we're going to get into it this Thursday on the podcast. But if you've read Numbers, Exodus, you know, the story of the children of Israel, we know that they had become a headache to Moses, a pain. A lot of times they wouldn't listen. They wasn't trusting God. You know, like he said about Caleb, you know, and this is dealing with when they went to spy out the land. And like I said, we'll, t we'll touch on that on Thursday, but they just didn't have the right spirit. And one of the things that they did a lot of that I just wanted to touch on briefly this Monday is that they had a complaining spirit like no other. One of the main things that they did all the time was complain. It was always something that wasn't going right according to them in their wilderness process. And that's what they didn't understand, that this was a process. This was something that God was allowing them to go through. And I talked about this recently, you know, in Deuteronomy chapter eight, how God, he has said to them, he says, and thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know what was in thine heart. So God said, listen, I allowed you to go through this process because I wanted this process to humble you. I wanted it to prove you. I wanted to know what was in your heart. And how many know when we go through the wildernesses of our lives, it shows us something about us. And it also shows us something about God that he is true to his word. But even though he was doing all the things he had done for them in Egypt, in the wilderness, they still was complaining. And that's what a lot of us do even up until this date, even though there's certain things going on in our lives and God has been good to us, you know, we're still eating, we're still clothed, you know, we still have a place to stay, you know, other people all around the world is, is having it, they have it way worse than we have it, yet we are still complaining. And that's why I talked about a couple of weeks ago, the importance of just stopping and saying, thank you, Lord. And the importance of just saying, Lord, I am grateful for what I do have. I may not have what I would like to have, but I am grateful for what I do have. Just like I talked about the computer. And yes, I'm going to, by the grace of God, get a new, new computer, but I am grateful for what I have. I'm not going to stop using 
my old computer because it's not running that well and start complaining about, oh, Lord, you know, why are you doing this to me or why you're not doing this for me? I'm trying to do this work for you and this computer's too. No, I am grateful that I have a computer to do what it is that I'm doing and to do some things that the Lord has called me to do. But a lot of times when God is doing certain things in our lives, sometimes we forget to just say thank you Lord and we constantly complain and I see so many people complaining just because of the way 2020 has been it's just complaining after complaining and when I think about some of these people lives I'm like listen you should be grateful that you're living the life that you're living because there's somebody else that has it way worse. And I'm talking about people that's complaining. They still working. They still have some type of money coming in. They still have something to eat. They still have the love of their families around them, but yet they are finding some way to complain or, or they, they're finding something to complain about. And that's one of the things that the children of Israel did a lot of. And we see that it got to the point of where they did so many different things that God just got fed up with them and said, listen, enough is enough. The thing that I promised you, you are not going to see why, because you could not trust me and keep your faith in me through the process. And I want to encourage you guys. This is just a wilderness process. Remember I talked about in the last podcast, God will carry you through the storm. And that's why I want to touch on this for the next podcast. Cause it's going to be like a part two to that, because I want to I want people to understand that, yes, God will carry you through the storm. He will carry you through the wilderness. But I don't want people to forget there are some things that is required of us as we travel through this wilderness. And one of the major things is no complaining. Yes, we get discouraged. Yes, things get a little hard. But if you truly trust the Lord like Caleb did and you have that the right spirit, you know, and you follow him fully. What does it mean to follow him fully? To totally trust in him. And that's why the scripture says, he that endures to the end shall be saved. Once we are with the Lord, there's no turning back. There's no second guessing. When our trust is in the Lord, we say no matter what situation we are in, whether to us it looks good or it looks bad, we know that God has everything under control 100%. And that's what God is looking for from us because If something pops up in our life and it just looks like, you know, oh, this is terrible. This is bad. And then we find ourselves second guessing what God told us, the promises that he said he would do. Then how many know then, you know. Are we really trusting the Lord? You know what I mean? Do we really believe that God is who he says he is? Do we really believe that God said that I will never leave you nor forsake you? And the answer is, of course he wouldn't, because we've seen it so many different times in our lives. And even when you look into what they what was said in numbers, and I'm going to really dig into that. They saw what God was doing in their lives, and yet they still was complaining. Even to the point, there were times where they talked about going back into bondage. They would rather be back in Egypt where they were slaves and 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 making, you know, strong together bricks and all of the hard labor and all of the crazy things that they were going through. And the weird thing is, is that they cried out to the Lord for help and God sends help, brings them out, and yet it's still not good enough. And that's something that we deal with as human beings too. Too often, sometimes we just can't stop and just be grateful and thankful and content with the small things in our life. And and a lot of times they're not small, they're great things, but we look at them as small because we may be comparing them to somebody else's life or comparing them to what somebody else has. And it's like, no, be content and be thankful for what you have. And that doesn't mean that God is not going to open other doors, but at least be able to say, thank you, Lord, for where you currently are right now. Thank you, Lord. I trust you and I know you have everything under control. I see the pandemic. I see COVID-19. But thank you, Lord. I know that in spite of all of this chaos that's going on around me, you are still Lord. You are still God. You are still number one. You still have everything under control. But I'm here to encourage you guys. Don't find yourself complaining in the midst of your storm. Because one thing I learned that happens when God brings us out and I'm going to close with this. Have you ever been through a storm and you found yourself complaining? You were kicking, screaming, crying. And then when God brings you out of that storm, which he which he always does when he brings you out of that storm. 
now you can't properly really tell the testimony, the your testimony the way that you would like because you're trying to testify to somebody like, oh, I knew God was going to do it and it's not. But within you, you knew that you cried and you kicked the whole type of way. So you kind of marred your testimony. You know what I mean? You kind of messed up being able to give God the glory fully the way that you should have because you kicked and screamed and cried the whole way when God kept saying, listen, just trust me. This is only for a season. This is only temporary. And that's what the children of Israel could not get through their heads that, listen, this is just temporary. This wilderness process was not meant to be long, but they turned it into something that God never intended. So I wanted to encourage you guys today. Listen, be thankful, guys. Be grateful. Don't find yourselves complaining be content where you are and know be sure of that god has everything under control listen until the next time we share a beautiful spiritual meal together know that i love you guys shalom